Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2018 Honda CRV in the EXL trim level. So this is a almost the highest trim level in the CRV lineup. So let's go ahead and check it out. This CRV is sitting on 235, 60 hand cooked tires wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels in a gray and alloy. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Lunar Silver Metallic. This is one of those colors that, even when it's slightly dirty, it's hard to really tell. I like, I like these colors, the silver spectrum. Okay, so looking at the front, uh, this one has a chrome portion that extends at the wide bar there with the Honda emblem, extends across the grill, but then it also continues around to the headlights. Then you have a combination of flat black and gloss black grill. Fog lights powered by halogen bulbs in a reflector housing. And then you have the projector halogen bulbs for your low beams and then your high beams are in a reflector housing and LED turn signals. And they're surrounded by black bezels or a combination of black and chrome. There's a LED underscoring the headlights that's a daytime running light. The Honda sensing features here in the front are indicated by the little camera uh, next to the rear view mirror right there. And then you have a radar sensor just below the emblem right here. This little spot is your uh, adaptive cruise control sensor basically, but it also is used for other things. So looking at the profile of the vehicle, you can see it has a pretty hefty protection here for the paint on the very bottom around the wheel wells, but it goes up quite a bit. Color matching uh, handles and side mirrors as well. And it also has the privacy glass in the back and it's all blended together with the pillars that are also uh, in a flat black. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system. And Honda does a really good job with the keys, I believe, because they've used the same key for a while now. And uh, it's small, it's fairly light, it has a lot of uh, functionality, and it's something that you want to keep with you. As long as it's in your pocket or a bag or something, you can use the vehicle 100% without taking it out. So it has a lock and unlock buttons, the ability to open up the power lift gate, and a remote start. And also a panic button. Physical key is on the inside in case you need that. Let's go ahead and push the panic button. That's a pretty strong horn there, a little bit surprising, but it also flashes the lights as it, as it beeps the horn. As long as you have the key with you, as long as it's within a close proximity of this door, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, whatever, uh, you can lock the doors by placing your finger over the sensor right here, indicated by these three lines. Uh, it senses your finger, it senses the key within a close proximity of the outside of the door. It can tell if it's inside or outside. Um, main reason why is because when you put your hand behind the handle, it actually unlocks the door. So if you're inside the car, it's not going to do this. People just can't walk up and open up your door if the key's inside the vehicle. Okay, taking a look here on the passenger side. So really functional and comfortable door in, in my opinion. You have a soft touch surface here at the very top. Then you have the wood grain, it's a simulated wood grain, and then it's very soft here on the side, as well as here. And it's kind of like a uh, vinyl, you know, synthetic leather type material with a stitching. This is a pocket. You have your hard touch surfaces down here, um, but everything here and up and here back, except for the wood grain, uh, for the most part is soft touch surfaces. And then your pockets, uh, you have a bottle holder here, but you notice it has this, the main pocket is here in the front, more in the forward position. So not only while you're, while you're sitting in a seat, you can reach it easier, but also you can see it a little bit easier than more you know, closer to you on your side. It has a speaker, actually has two speakers, one here and a little tweeter speaker here in the pillar. 
There's the threshold power seat here for the passenger. So it doesn't go up and down, it goes forward and back and then tilt. These are heated seats, by the way. Perforations here in the center portion, heated leather seats. And then you have the smooth, you know, pretty traditional leather texturing here on the ends. Plenty of leg room here in the front. You can see there's almost no tapering. It actually extends a little bit more on that side. Um, just to give you a little bit more leg room, but it's nice and wide and straight and you know Plenty of room. This is helpful in long trips, of course, so you can get positioned You don't have to hold yourself in one position the whole time. You can kind of you know fidget around and Then a soft touch dash little gloss black accent and then the uh, wood grain And you have a lock and glove compartment It's all smooth plastic in there You see it also has that chrome trim around the windows but uh privacy glass here in the back keeps people from looking in and the sun from shining on you so much but looking out of the vehicle you can still see fairly well it even reduces glare so that's helpful okay so the back doors uh, you have the hard touch surface here at the top but it is the soft touch around your arm in this area and then a pocket here as well as here you notice all these are in the forward position just like the front and then you have two speakers a tweeter and the standard speaker there the second row seats are basically a bench seat uh, that it, you have the ability to have a center passenger and also you can fold these down in a 60 40 split to add to your cargo space when needed you have a pocket on the back of the front seat here on the passenger side only and check it out, almost a completely flat floor. So there's a little bit of a hump there in the center, but that really helps out with having a center passenger or just generally having more room here in the back. You have two USB charging ports. So when you're, keeps the backseat drivers busy, so they are leave you alone while you're driving so they can charge your device and all that stuff. Armrest with cup holders here in the center. We, you will have to move that out of the way. It does have the latch system for car seats in all three positions. Now folding the seats down, I'm going to go ahead and fold this one down to show you. Uh, as you fold it down, you'll see the bottom portion lowers as well. So as it goes down, it kind of sandwiches itself close to the floor so to give you the maximum amount of space above the seat and just about uh, as low as it can possibly go. Now you'll see that you can still maintain passenger space whilst adding to your cargo space and that's the whole intention. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, it has a color matching uh, third, a little shark fin antenna right up in here and then a third brake light right in there powered by LEDs. And then you have quite a bit of chrome and a rear wiper. It also has uh, LED tail lights, which look really nice at nighttime. You should check out my night video on this. Backup camera, that's a little bit offset, but still looks pretty good. And has a dual exhaust, but uh, they're kind of hidden a little bit. Not so much protruding out. So opening up the power lift gate, you can of course use the key a button in next to the uh, driver's seat or you could simply push a button under here and it'll open up for you all right so this one has a shade which you can move back or take out completely I'm just move it back for right now. So you have a cargo mat. So this is the uh, plastic cargo mat that kind of protects the, the cargo sp space. But if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is your cargo space. And it's pretty good size, especially the height as well. 
So you have a light on that side, storage space, another light on that side, and some more storage space there. And let's go ahead and lift this up. And there's your spare tire, insulated quite well, and your uh, jack and tools here as well, and also this little funnel there next to the jack, which I'll show you what that's for in just a minute. Now you can lower the seats, uh, the second row seats, by the handle I showed you before on the back of the seat, or if you're back here and you're not trying to fit something in, there's a handle here, so we just pull that and it lowers the seat for you, kind of slowly it lowers it down. So now I've added to my cargo space while still maintaining the passenger space on the other side without walking around and opening up the door. Now, if you fold down both the seats and take out the shade, you have this really, really massive place, um, cargo space back here. It's very surprising the amount of spaces back here. Okay, to lower the lift gate, you can of course use the key or you can push this button and it'll go down. Now, if you don't want that lift gate to go quite so high, uh, then you, you pull it down to where you want it and you press and hold that button until it uh, it goes through a series of beeps and then it will save that height position so that way if you have a low uh, garage or whatever or if you just don't you know want it so high uh, you can set it at different heights the fuel door is locking and it's on the driver's side which is nice and you remember that funnel I was telling you about? It's actually um, for, for this, but it's only if you need to use a gas can. Typically, you take the nozzle at the gas station, put it in there with no cap, and pump your gas, and um, you don't have to worry about a cap. It does have this seal around the outside, um, but it is a two-stage system, so it's uh, protected fairly well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it up. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, or sitting in a cup holder. Uh, you just put on, put your foot on the brake and hold it, and push this button right here. Here's the floorboard in front of the, the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat hooks in place in two places keeps it straight for you and it's really easy to just un unsnap it out of there and take it out and put it back in there's your accelerator and brake pedals and you have a very large uh, footrest here on the left side which is a must for me and a lot of drivers so let's take a look under the hood to open the hood there's a latch a little bit to the left of center right in here you just move it to the right and lift up you can see the latch right there and it does require a prop to, lift, to hold it up. So there's the prop here, and it goes right there. So taking a look under the hood, uh, the underside of the hood has a insulation right here. It also has a seals around the outside, as well as the back, kind of keeping the airflow going in a certain direction, also keeping the noise down. It also has an insulated battery and firewall. So this one is not covered up with a big plastic cover, which is nice. Also, I want to point out that the strut towers are braced in with the uh, ACE body structure. Okay, so this is a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It's also direct injection. and it's paired to a CVT automatic transmission. So something I wanna point out here, it's kinda of interesting. Since it has a turbocharger, the intake, the fresh air goes in here, goes through this pipe, through the turbocharger, and then around the other side of the engine, and then your intake is actually here in the back. And your exhaust, which is powering your turbo, is here in the front. So having the, in, the, uh, the air flow in this way, but yet your intake is in the back, it uh, looks a little bit different, but it's because it has the turbocharger. The inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, basically, except for it has a few more buttons. You have the 
automatic power windows here for the front. So it's one touch up, one touch down. And you notice the front windows are not, they don't have the privacy glass, so you can tint those if you wanted to to match. Then you have your door lock controls, side mirror adjustments. You just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad. Then you have two uh, seat presets for the power seat. Now the driver, in addition to going forward and back and tilt, you can also um, you know, raise the seat up, tilt the bottom part of the seat, and you also have a four-way lumbar adjustment as well. So the driver always it seems to always get a little bit treated a little bit better than the passenger. To the left of the steering column, you have some buttons here. Well, first you have this little storage compartment, put some change or whatever, and it goes down in. So it goes down and then down. So that way, if you put change in there, it's not gonna, you know, when you floor it, it's not gonna fly out as easy. So the buttons here, you have the road departure mitigation that you can turn on or off. You can push this to open up the power lift gate. Trash control, default will be on. You can turn it off here in case you need to spin tires. Typically, if you're stuck in the mud or snow and you need to spin your way out, then uh, that will help uh, turn that feature off. And then the forward collision warning system, uh, you can turn that off as well here. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place here. So you push it to lock it, you pull it to release it. Okay, so sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out, the seats are really comfortable. And I had the lumbar adjusted, I had the seat adjusted. Now I put the seat a little bit further back just to give you an idea of the possible leg room. I'm six feet tall. It's a little bit further back than what I would probably normally drive. And the footrest is perfect. There's plenty of room for my big foot and just overall really good as far as just the amount of space for the driver. Now it has the blind spot monitor detector here on the side mirrors and that will illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. It will also illuminate if there's a vehicle uh, coming from either direction as you're backing out of a parking spot. So that's handy, that's the rear cross traffic alert system. It basically uses the same system to, uh, for both features. Okay, so here's the steering wheel. It's a leather wrap steering wheel with a smooth leather, so it doesn't have the traditional leather texturing like the synthetic looking stuff over here. It's like this is made to look like the traditional leather texturing, but this is just a smooth leather. Your cruise control is here on the right side. Uh, it does not, it's not a regular cruise control. It has the adaptive cruise control. It also has the lane keep assist system. Uh, so that way when you set your cruise, you can has a radar system that will match the speed in, of the vehicle in front of you if that vehicle is going slower than you're going. So uh, that way it doesn't you're not constantly having to adjust your speed and everything depending on traffic. It kind of goes with the flow until they get out of the way and then it continues up to your speed. So that's a really handy feature. Uh, it also has the lane keep assist in which you actually turn the steering wheel to keep you within the, your lane. So looking at the 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 lines on the road using that camera next to the behind the rear view mirror uh, it will keep it on the road and keep you within your lanes now the right that's a little bit different from the road departure system which will keep you from exiting the road completely so that's two different systems um, you know using you know the same technology basically but accomplishing different things so main, this was actually turn on your uh, cruise control as well as your lane keep assist. And you could turn that off if you want to, if you just don't want that on. Here on the left side of the steering wheel, you have your volume for your radio. Now this is works two ways. You can just slide your finger across it and it will adjust the volume just by sliding it. Or you can press it and you can go up and down however you like. Uh, it also has the Bluetooth controls, uh, answer calls, hang up, and also the voice recognition in which you can call out a person in your contacts and it'll go ahead and call them. Uh, you will need to use the correct commands, of course. And then these buttons here, this one and this one, correspond with the screens, which we'll get to in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are there on the right side. Turn signals here on the left, but it also has your headlight controls. So you have headlights, automatic, parking, and off. Then your fog lights are controlled right here. Okay, so here's your gauges. Now you have uh, 
a gauge here on the left and you see it kind of looks like a, a digital representation of a gauge but it's actually a physical gauge with a little um, you know illuminated line there in it so this is your engine coolant temperature on the right side is your fuel gauge here in the center portion is actually a digital screen uh, with a lot of different information so it has the RPMs across the top it also has a little white line above here which will change colors as you drive to kind of you know tell you how efficient you're driving basically and a digital speedometer your range gives you your fuel economy right there so pushing this button right here uh, we can cycle through and get some more information so I push that button right now it's showing fuel economy we can push it this one is the driver attention level so it keeps an eye on your the way you steer and the way you drive the vehicle and if it seems like you're driving a little bit sloppy it'll kind of give you a little bit of a, 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 a an alert here just let you know hey maybe it's time for a break type thing continuing on uh, this is a little tool right here is like your oil life letting you know when it's time to change the oil that kind of thing the next one is uh, your radio just whatever's going on your radio and then your phone so like your caller ID will show up here you can change to uh, kilometers per hour in this this portion then it goes back to your original screen in which you get the fuel economy now you can change through the uh, radio stations the audio tracks here or your presets going up and down when you're in the in the radio screen I like the way it has a little digital clock there as well that's nice and the outside temperature You notice when the vehicle's on, the start button turns red, which is cool. You have your four-way flashers here at the top, and then the vents, touch screen, and it has a, vis uh, a physical volume knob. If you're, uh, you know, accustomed to that, you want you want to have that. This is your home screen. So when you push this little home screen, this is when it's going to show up, and you have um, the ability to slide back and forth. Uh, you have the smartphone connection in which you can um, connect your phone and use some of the features off of that. Also, Honda Link uh, uses that as well. You go into your audio screen. So you have your, right now it's just showing AM, but you notice your presets are there at the very bottom. Let's change the audio source. We have FM, AM, satellite radio, uh, USB, Bluetooth. Uh, you connect your iPod, Pandora, or uh, the smartphone um, connections there, the different features that are available there going back home you can ch pair different phones and let's go into the settings so you can see all the different uh, settings that you can go into and of course there's a clock here as well as you see now you can push this button and you can go into a kind of like an Android type system, kind of a little bit of older type Android system in which you could download apps as a calculator and um, and different things like that. So you can set that up the way you want it. Climate control is here, so your fan speed, temperature for your driver and passengers are here. You can sync them to where they're all the same if you want by pushing that button. Then you have recirculate the air, front and rear defrosters. When you turn the rear defrosters, it also turns on the heated side mirrors. And then you have your heated seats. Now it's a three stage, high, medium, and low for the driver and passenger on that side. You have an econ button to uh, tell the vehicle that you want to get the best gas mileage. You're gonna get a little bit less performance when you do that, but um, you know if you're not concerned with that, that will give you the best gas mileage when you have that turned on. So this is an electronic parking brake. So you lift it up to engage it and push it down to disengage it. It also has a brake hold feature. So when this is turned on, uh, when you come to a complete stop, say at a traffic jam or stoplight or stop sign, it's gonna hold the brake for you so you don't have to sit there and hold the brake the whole time while you're waiting in traffic. As soon as you push the accelerator, it'll release the brake and you move forward. Here's a shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And check out the backup camera it has active guidelines so as I turn the steering wheel the lines will move 
You also have different views. So you have this more wide, wide view, uh, more linear view, and then a straight down view. You can also turn on or off your um, rear cross traffic alert here if you'd like. Continuing down, there's drive. That's your normal drive mode. This is sport mode, and this is a low range. So if you need to use engine braking, uh, like you're going down a hill or something, it will give you a lower gear ratio when you put it in this low range. 12 volt power supply here. Storage space, which is has a rubber mat that you can take out and clean and put it back in. There's two cup holders, and it's separated in the center, so it's open here. Um, so that way you can use this space for more than just cups and also handles will fit in there like, you know, mugs or whatever. All right, so you notice I have a little key right here. Um, this little spot is really handy because you can put stuff here and you can also move it back out of the way and put some stuff underneath it. And under here actually is where you'll find uh, USB ports and um, where you plug in your phone. So like say if you want to utilize some of the features or if you just want to charge your phone or plug in a um, like a little flash drive and play music off of it, that kind of thing. And also a 12 volt power supply. Now this right, here's your armrest and it's pretty soft too. And this lifts up. And this is actually the tray here and it snaps in place where you can move it out of the way and keep stuff in it you can access stuff behind it or you could just take it out it's actually removable you just just kind of fits in there spring loaded you can take it out if you want to just utilize the space more in a more open way to put more junk in there basically uh, or you can have it in place Rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. You have tap lights, home link garage uh, opener. Uh, you also have the ability to have the lights off or turn on with uh, on or have them turn on with the door. So the center position is the door. There's on and then there's off. Um, let me go ahead and turn on the headlights. I'm going to show you something. There's a little light right in here that illuminates the center portion of the vehicle or just in the center uh, console there. It's very dim, but it's just enough to give you a little bit of bearings, kind of like a moonlight. Um, and that's that little, little thing that shines right there when the headlights are on. And this is, of course, is for your sunroof, which we'll get to in a minute. And this is a place to put some sunglasses and it has like a foam, pretty durable feeling foam backing to protect them. Goes in that quite a ways. You lift it up and you drop it now you have a conversation mirror, so you can keep an eye on the backseat drivers. Here's the visor. It has mirrors and lights. And the sunroof. So the sunroof has a uh, shade that covers up 100% of the light. You can open it up. Get some sun in, you can tilt it, or you can move it back. As far back as it goes. Looking at the visibility in the back. So I have one seat down, one seat up, just to give you an idea. Now the seats really don't get in the way too much. I mean, it's more of the pillars back there. So the seats kind of line up with the pillars. But, uh, I mean, you have plenty of glass back there. Of course, you have the camera system, blind spot monitor system, all that to help you as well. All right, there you have it. 2018 Honda CRV at East Coast Honda. Thank you for watching, and thank you to East Coast Honda again. And I'll see you guys next time.